Hello friends, welcome to UPSC Logix and in this video we shall have a look at the structure and relief of India. So we shall be dealing with some important MCQs that are relatively important from the state PCS exam point of view. So without wasting any time, let's begin this particular session. Which is the oldest landmass in India? It is the Peninsular Plateau. In fact, the scientists believe that the Peninsular Plateau is one of the oldest landmasses in the entire world and they are often compared to a horse. So what is a horse? Horse is basically a raised block of earth's crust that has lifted or has remained stationary while the land on either side has subsided. So if you look at this picture, initially this was a stable landmass, then these landmasses subsided or this particular mass rose and this is called a horse and the landmass which has subsided is called a graben. So horse is basically Dutch or German for heap. Consider the following statements. The Himalayan ranges were formed when the Indian plate was driven northwards and pushed beneath the Eurasian plate. This statement is absolutely correct. The Himalayas reached their old age in the geological history of the earth. The Himalayas are still in their very young stage in fact. The presence of gorges, V-shaped valleys, waterfalls, etc. mark the presence of young fold mountains. Therefore, only one is correct. The Indian subcontinent was originally a part of huge landmass called the Gondwana land. This is option D is correct. Match list 1 with 2. So these lists have already been matched. Deccan traps belong to the Crustaceous Eocene age. Western Ghats belong to the late Cenozoic age. Arabalis belong to the Pre-Cambrian age. In fact, these are the oldest mountains in the Indian subcontinent. And this question was asked in UKPSC 2017. Narmada Tapi Alluvial Deposit. This belongs to the Pleistocene age. Which is the most appropriate reason for considering that Gondwana rocks as the most important rock system in India? So if we have a look at this picture, the Gondwana system of rock provides over 95% of coal of India. Moreover, it provides iron ore, limestone, sandstone and raw materials for ceramic industry. So if we look at the map, this is the area, basically the Jharkhand area and uh, the adjoining areas. These are all the coal mines and these belong to the Gondwana rock system. So option B is correct in this case, more than 90% of coal reserves are found in them. Which of the following is the oldest rock system in India? So this would be the Archean rock system and in fact the Archean period covers 86.7% of the total geological history time of earth and therefore is very significant. This period also marks the development of the first photosynthesis, the life support atmosphere, the Archean rocks in India are called Purana rocks and uh, it means these are the oldest rocks and uh, the Archean or the Purana rock system in India is found in the Arabli mountains and two thirds of the Deccan Peninsula and some part of the northeast are also covered by the Archean rock system and these rocks are abundant in metallic and non-metallic minerals such as iron, copper, magnesium, bauxite lead, zinc, gold, silver, tin, tungsten, mica, asbestos, graphite, etc. So the correct option here is the Archean rock system and this is option A. Consider the following statements. The tertiary is the most important period in India's geological history because the Himalayas were born in this period. This is absolutely correct. And then Pleistocene is marked by cold climate and widespread glaciation. This is also correct. So option, both options one and two are correct. Then the correct chronological sequence of the India's time scale is, so first comes the Archean, which is around 4,000 million years old. Then comes the Purana, which is around 1,400 to 600 million years old. Then comes the Dravidian rock system which is around 600 to 300 million years old. And the last but not the least is the Aran which is around 300 million year old rock system. Examine the following statements and give the correct code. Most of the tertiary rocks are found along the foothills of the Himalayas. 
Himalayas were formed during the tertiary age, so obviously tertiary rocks would be found there. Statement is correct. Coast of India have experienced both submergence and emergence. This is also correct. The Deccan Trap is a result of stupendous volcanic activity from the end of Crustaceous till the beginning of Eocene. This is also correct. The Kerala coast is dotted by a number of backwaters and lagoons known as Kayals. This is also correct. So all four statements are correct. The correct option is D. Consider the following statements. The main boundary thrust separates the greater Himalayas from the lesser Himalayas. This is absolutely correct. The Himalayan front fault separates the northern plains from the Shivalik range. This is also correct. So both statements 1 and 2 are correct. Which of the following statement is not correct? So the not correct statement is being asked here. Large part of Gondwana land were affected by glaciers in the Carboniferous period. This is correct statement. Traces of Carboniferous glaciation are found in the Himalayas. Carboniferous period started around 350 million years ago and Himalayas are just 10 million years old. So this is the wrong statement in this particular case. The correct answer is B. The Aravlis represent the oldest hill range in India. This is absolutely correct. As I told you before, this was asked in UKPSC 2017. And they belong to the Arcan rock system or the Purana rock system. The Aravlis are covered with that. The tertiary system is also known as age of mammals. So the age of mammals started during the tertiary system. This is also correct. Examine the following statements and give the correct code. The Arkin system consists of oldest rocks in India. So this statement is absolutely correct. As we know, these are the 4000 year old rock system. And these are all the areas where the Arkin rock system is found. The Dharwar system is very well developed in Karnataka. So as you can see, this is where the Karnataka is and Dharwar system is around this place and belongs to the Arkin rock system. So statement B is also correct. The upper Vindian is enclosed diamond bearing zones. So if we see the Vindian system, it is around here. And these are the diamond bearing zones. So this is also correct. So one, two, three is correct. Consider the following statement. Khadar is made of old alluvium. Khadar is mainly confined to the flood plains along the river banks. So Khadar is basically soil deposited every year along the flood plains of the rivers. And therefore it is not made of old alluvium. This is new alluvium. So statement A is incorrect. Statement B is absolutely correct. So option 2 is correct. Which of the following statement is not correct? The western part of Thar Desert has longitudinal sand dunes. This is correct. The eastern part of Thar Desert is characterized by Barkhans. This is correct. The eastern part of Thar Desert has larger sand dunes in size than the western part. In fact, this is the wrong statement. The western part of Thar Desert has larger size sand dunes and these than what is found in the eastern part. And this is due to the fact that the climate in the western Thar region is drier and there is plenty of sand in that area. So the sand dunes grow larger in the western part. The Thar Desert is characterized by inland drainage and large number of salt lakes. This is a problem of salination in Rajasthan. So definitely this statement is also correct. So statement A, B, C, A, B, D are correct and C is the incorrect statement. The Delhi series belongs to, so the Delhi series is also known as the Riley system and it belongs to the Kadappa system. So option A is correct. The Himalayas started rising in the period of, uh, this was in the middle Eocene. Point out the correct sequence of the mountain ranges north to south. So let us have a look at this picture. And if we have ever look at this picture, we can see that the trans Himalayan ranges are the Karakoram range, the Ladakh range, the Jaskar range and the Kalash range. And uh, these form the, this particular area. So the top area 1, 2, 3 and 4, these are the trans Himalayan ranges. Then comes the great Himalayas, then comes the lesser Himalayas and then the outer Himalayas. And some of the important peaks in this particular area are the Nanga Parbat, which is right over here. Then we have got K2 right around this place. Then we have got Mount Kailash around here. 
Mount Everest is over here, then Kanchenjunga is right here, and Namcha Barwa, which is the easternmost peak, is right over here. So, the first one is the Trans Himalayan ranges, then comes the Greater Himalayas, then the Lesser Himalayas, and then the Outer Himalayas. So the correct option in this case would be option B, which is the Trans Himalayas, Great Himalayas, Middle Himalayas, and Outer Himalayas. The highest peak of K2 in India is located at, so the, we have been asked the highest peak of K2 of India. And this is in the Karakoram range. Then find the correct sequence of Himalayan peaks in descending order of the height above sea level. So we are, can see from this picture. So the options which are given to us are Kanchenjunga, Dholagiri, Anpurna, and Nanda Devi. So let us have a look at the heights. Mount Everest is in Nepal and it is 8848 meters. Then we have got Kanchenjunga which is in India and it is at 8598 meters. So as we can see Kanchenjunga is at the top spot. So option A, B and C can be considered. Then comes Makalu which is in Nepal and it is at 8481 meters then we have got Dholakuri which is also in Nepal at 8172 meters so the next is Dholagiri and uh, then comes Anpurna which is at 8078 meters so right over here and the last but not the least is the Nanda Devi at 7817 meters so right over here so option A is correct in this case just to have a look at the other heights so Comet is also in India and it is 7756 meters. Then we have got Namcha Barwa which is also in India and 7756 meters. And the last is Gurla Mandata which is in Nepal and it is at 7728 meters. So match the following. So in this particular question we have to match the glaciers with the region. Then we have to match peaks with hill ranges and lakes with states. So I already matched them beforehand only, so let us have a look at the glaciers. Baltoro is in Karakoram range, then Gangri is in Peer Panjal range, Gangotri is in Garhwal region and Lindawa Da is in central Nepal region. Then let us have a look at the peaks and the hill ranges. So Guru Shikhar is in Arabli and it is the highest peak of the Arabli hills and is located in Rajasthan. It is 1722 meters. Then we have got Dada Beta in the Nilgiris, Annamudi is in Annamalai Hills and Dhubgad is in Satpura. So then we come to the lakes with the states. So Vembanad Lake is in Kerala, then Pulikat is in Andhra Pradesh, Chilka is in Odisha and Sambal Salt Lake is in Rajasthan. The Western Ghats meet the Eastern Ghats at, so this is a simple question, Nilgiri Hills, this is the correct answer. What is the correct sequence of passes starting from northwest to southeast? So let us have a look at this picture and we'll come to know exactly what is being asked here. So the correct sequence from northwest to southeast would be Changla, that is number one. Then comes Lanakla, then comes Jarala and the last is the Shipkila Pass. So option A is the correct option in this case. And if we have a look at the other mountain passes, then we have got the Rotang Pass right over here. And Shipkila is right over here. In fact, there is another question which asks about Shipkila, which is matched the following. So it is in Himachal Pradesh. Then Mana Pass is in Uttarakhand. Then Ti Pass is also Uttarakhand. And uh, so we can have a look at here, right here is the Bolan Pass. So then comes the mark the correct sequence of the passes in the Western Ghat from north to south. So this is another simple question. It is a simple statement to remember the boring passes which are the Western Ghat passes. And if you remember the boring passes you will know the sequence T, B, P. And that is Thalgat, Borgat and Palgat. So that is option is C. Match the following mountain pass with the state. So Kapsangla is in JNK, Shipkila is in Himachal Pradesh, Bomdila is in Arunachal Pradesh and Nathula is in Sikkim. Match division of the Himalayas according to Sir Sidney Burand with the list of rivers in which these divisions are situated. 
सो इफ यू हैव अ लुक एट दिस पिक्चर वी कैन सी पंजाब हिमालयाज इज बिटवीन इंदस एंड सतलज देन वी हैव गॉट कुमाऊ हिमालयाज बिटवीन काली एंड सतलज राइट ओवर हियर देन वी हैव गॉट नेपाल हिमालयाज बिटवीन काली एंड टीस्टा and then the assam himalayas between brahmaputra and tista right over here so this question is quite easy then consider the following statements jojila pass connects shrinagar with leh this is correct burzil pass connects india with central asia this is also correct shipkila pass connects shimla with tibet this is also correct jelapla connects sikkim with nepal this is wrong it connects sikkim with bhutan so 1 2 3 are correct then match mountain peaks with location these have already been matched so comet is in kumau hills then dholagiri is in nepal himalayas gasherbam is in karakoram range and kangto is in eastern himalayas match glaciers with location so pasu is in hunza valtaro is in bardolo valley yarkun rimo is in shok valley lidanda is in masalu correct sequence is to west so the correct sequence is being asked so rakaposhi is in the western part of uh, jammu and kashmir northwestern parts and it is 7788 meters so this is the western most peak so this would be the last one to come in so if you have a look at the options b c and d might be correct then we have a look at nanda devi this is nanda devi is in uttarakhand and stands at 7817 meters then comes mansalu this is in central nepal near the nepal china border and mansalu is in the eastern part of nepal near the nepal china border so makalu comes in first then comes mansalu then nanda devi and rakaposhi so the correct sequence is d 4321 consider the following hills so let us have a look at this picture and kemur we have been asked uh, the correct sequence from north to south so kamur hills comes in first then comes vindhya satpuras then ajanta range and the last is the nilgiri so the correct option is 1 2 3 4 which of the following is not correctly matched guru shikhar is in rajasthan and not gujarat so this is the one which is not correctly matched mahabaleshwar is in maharashtra then annamudi is in Kerala right over here we can see it and Annamalai is in Tamil Nadu so it is right over here so this has been marked here and this is in Tamil Nadu and Cardamom Hills is right at the bottom so we can remember that as well match mountain pass with location So let us have a look at this picture. And uh, Barla Lacha is in Himachal Pradesh, right over here. Then we got Tungala, that is in Arunachal Pradesh, which is not on the map. Then we got Agil Pass in Jammu and Kashmir, right on here, on the top with Mintaka Pass. Then we got Mana Pass, and that is in Uttarakhand, right, sitting over right over here with Niti Pass and Shipkila. Shipkila is in Himachal Pradesh. Then. Uh, consider the following and we have been given three states uh, three hills and we have been asked the correct sequence of hills moving from north east to south west and to remember this there is a easy trick which is called prime minister narendra modi so if you can remember this it is very easy so first is patkai then is naga hills and then is the mizo hills so 312 is the correct option then we have got match the beach with state So Marina is in Tamil Nadu, Gopalpur by sea is in Odisha, Varkala is in Kerala, and Bogmelo is in Goa. Which of the following mountain ranges is spread across only one state in India? So let us have a look at this picture, and we'll be it will be much more easier to understand. So let us first have a look at Aravallis, and Aravallis is somewhere around here, this one, and it runs through Rajasthan and Gujarat. then we got the satpuras and satpuras is right somewhere around here south of narmada and uh, satpuras run east west direction and uh, they are spread over maharashtra and uh, madhya pradesh 
then we got ajanta hills ajanta hill is right over here and this only runs through maharashtra so this is the only mountain range that runs through one state the correct option is c and then we have got shadri which runs through a number of states right across this whole area Nanda Devi peak is a part of so as we already know that Nanda Devi is a part of the is in Uttarakhand and is a part of the Kumaon Himalayas easy question Consider the following Ladakh Jaskar Karakoram Pir Panjal What is the correct sequence of mountain ranges as we move from northeast to southwest So let us have a look at the picture So first we shall look at uh, the karakoram range which is sitting right over here then we got uh, the ladakh range right on top here so we have been asked north east to southwest so the first one which would be coming in would be karakoram so three would be the first one in fact this is the correct option since three is the first and this is the only option that has got three in the beginning then we got number 1 which is of course ladakh and ladakh is sitting right over here at number 2 then we got uh, jaskar which is right over here and the last one is peer panjal so and peer panjal is in lesser himalaya somewhere around this place and since uh, jaskar belongs to the trans himalayan ranges it is slightly above the peer panjal range and that is why it comes before the peer panjal So the correct option is three, one, two, and four. Hindu Kush and Arakan Yoma are two extension of Himalayas. In which two countries are they located? So Hindu Kush and Arakan Yoma are in Afghanistan and Myanmar. The correct option is B. Among the following cities, which has the one has the highest altitude above mean sea level? So the mean sea level is being asked in this case. So Bangalore has got the highest altitude above mean sea level and stands at uh, 973 meters above mean sea level then it is followed by Nagpur then comes Jodhpur and the last comes Delhi at 218 meters Jodhpur is 230 meters while uh, Nagpur stands at 247 meters then Lake Sambar is the nearest to which one of the following cities in Rajasthan and this is closest to Jaipur match coast with location konkan coast is in maharashtra koramandal coast is in andhra pradesh then malabar coast is in kerala north sarkar is in odisha and andhra pradesh then which of the following is the correct sequence of the giving hills starting from north to south so let us have a look at the map and nalamalai hills is right over here then comes Jawadi hills down here then comes the nilgiri hills which is slightly below the jawadi hills and the last one is annamalai hills right down here and therefore this is the correct sequence the correct sequence is a in case there were no himalayas what would have been the impact on the conditions in india much of the country would experience cold wave from siberia absolutely correct karaburan would have directly affected indian subcontinent then indo gandantic plain would be devoid of alluvial plain this is also correct since there would be no ganges then uh, number c is the pattern of monsoon would be different than what it is at present this is also correct because himalayas play a imperial role in the monsoons which india has so all three statements are correct 1 2 and 3 The Brahmaputra, Indus, Aryavadi, and Mekong rivers originate in Tibet and flow through narrow and parallel mountain passes in their upper courses. Of these, the first two rivers make a U-turn while crossing the Himalayas and flow into India. This U-turn is due to this is due to the syntaxical bending of the geologically young Himalayas, and the correct option is B. When you travel in the Himalayas, you see the following deep gorges, U-turn rivers. parallel mountain ranges steep gradients causing landsliding which of the above suggests that himalayas being young folded mountains all these are basically symptoms of a young folded mountain and therefore all of them are correct so the correct option is 1 2 3 4 d consider the following the tara is a narrow tract of north indian plain running into the east west direction just south of babar this is correct 
it is marked by underground streams this is incorrect it is not marked by underground streams then the thrive belt is not fit for agriculture this is also wrong thrive belt is extremely fit for agriculture so the correct option is a only or one only consider the following statements Babar is a narrow belt running in the east west direction along the foot of the Shivaliks this is absolutely correct it is a continuous belt from the indus to the brahmaputra it actually runs till the tista river therefore this statement is wrong most of the rivers flow underground in the babar belt this is correct and the belt is very useful for agriculture this is a wrong statement babar is made of coarse rocks and is good enough only for growing trees so this is wrong so only one a and c are correct and if we look at the options so one and three are only then consider the following bangar is composed of old alluvium then bangar is always above the level of flood plains it is often impregnated with calcareous rocks and it does not contain fossils of animals so we have been asked which of the above statement is not correct and it does contain fossils of animals so option d is the incorrect or the correct answer for this particular question it is composed of old alluvium it is always above the level of the flood plains and therefore it does not get the new layer of alluvium and it is often impregnated with calcareous rocks and it contains fossils of animals as well match features to characteristics so they have already been matched and babar is a narrow belt running in east west direction along the foot of the shivaliks tarai a narrow belt running east west direction marked by ill drained mushy lands bangar composed of old alluvium above the level of the flood plains and khadar composed of new alluvium forming flood plains along the river banks consider the following the northern part of india is quite wide in the east but narrows down considerably in the west this statement is absolutely wrong if you have a look at the map of india you'll know this plain is very fertile in the east and less fertile in the west this statement is absolutely true because all the rivers which end in the bay of bengal deposit their new alluvium in the eastern plains and therefore only statement 2 is correct match land features with local names so shifting dunes of western part of rajasthan are called dhriyan patches of fertile tract in rajasthan are called rohi broad flood plains of khadar are called dhaya the tract north of luni is called thali consider the following garo khasi jantya hills and the correct sequence is of course garo khasi jantya easy to remember a b c that is the correct sequence which of the following lakes is not a lagoon so ashmodi chilka pulikat all three are lagoon lakes periyar is not a lagoon lake so that is the correct answer match hills to coast so they have already been matched cardamom hills are in kerala kaimur hills are in madhya pradesh mahadev hills are in central india then mikir hills are in assam harishchand range is in maharashtra baral range is in assam falkhoda range is andhra pradesh and maikala hills is in madhya pradesh which of which one of the following pairs of island is separated by each other by the 10 degree channel so this is a simple question this is andaman and nicobar islands consider the following areas of andaman and nicobar islands what is the correct sequence starting from north towards the south so this uh, north towards south sequence is port campbell then little andaman then little nicobar then car nicobar and great nicobar so the correct sequence has been given to us 1 2 3 4 5 consider the following statements chos comprise of a special feature of the punjab plains chos is a name given to the streams that cause extreme erosion in the punjab plains and they originate from the shivalik hills so this is absolutely correct then almost plain areas between the lesser himalayas and shivalik hills are known as dwars in the west and dunes in the east this is actually dunes in the west and dwars in the east so the statement b is incorrect So only one is correct. Option A is the correct answer. What is the correct sequence of dabs moving from east to west in the Punjab plains? So Punjab plains, as we know, is a land of five rivers: Satluj, Bias, Ravi, Chenab, and Jhelum. And 
therefore uh, if we'll have a look at the dogs this is best and best is from bias and satlas then bari is again bias and rabi then reshna is ravi and chenab and chaj is uh, chenab and jhelum so this is the correct sequence also the best bari reshna and chaj and if you have a look at it, if you want to understand this in a better way so you can always bifurcate this uh, so b i is taken from bias and satla is then bari is bias and ravi then reshna is ravi and chenab and chaj is chaj chenab and jhelum consider the following the western ghats are relatively higher in the northern region this is absolutely wrong they are higher in the southern region doda beta is the highest peak in the western ghats doda beta is not the highest peak in the western ghats the highest peak is the anamudi which stands at 2695 meters while doda beta is just 2637 meters saddle peak is the highest peak of andaman and nicobar islands and is located in so saddle peak is located in the north andaman islands so that is the correct d is the correct option and it stands at 737 meters So friends this brings us to the end of structure and relief of India and this has been a relatively long video so i hope you have enjoyed it and do subscribe to this channel if you are watching it for the first time if you are a regular subscriber don't forget to press the bell notification for new videos and thank you so much for watching and jai hind